BTC Creole Parametric 3.0 Lesson 13, Part 2. In the second lecture of Lesson 13, we will just take a look at a couple more items on here and how it's placed in the assembly. Um, the base plate, let's just look at that. It's not uh, very complicated, so I'm not going to go over all the individual commands on it. And what we're showing here is some of the holes that were put in with an automated process that we'll go over later. It's mainly just the six holes and the plate itself that we're concerned about here at this point. So we'll go back in and just take a look and see. Basically, you just have a very simple rectangular shape in the sketch, 10 by 40 inches, and centered. So make sure you do the, use the uh, rectangle, and you can use corner rectangle, and that works well for this center rectangle. And it is one and a half inches thick. So that's fairly simple. As far as the holes again go, let's take a look at those. First hole, it's placement. It's a through hole, it's not a standard hole. So it's very simple, through all, one inch. And it's one and a half, one and a half for one of the corners. The pattern itself six instances of it, and it's centered, so it's eighteen and a half. Fairly simple. And we're going to close this. Uh, let me take a look at this first. Let's see what happens here. These are all created when you're doing the automated inserting of a socket head cap screw and the dowel. So that's where this is coming from. We're not worried about it right now. I'm not concerned with this aspect of the project. All right, so let's go back over to the assembly and just take a simple look at that. Um, We've got a lot of moved copies and stuff like that, but in the very beginning here, the only thing we're really concerned about is the placement of the uh, mounting bracket, like so. So again, these socket head cap screws went in in an automated process, so don't worry about those right now. Not really what you're going to see. Let's go and do a edit definition of it. And you can see how it's placed. So our constraints are fairly simple here. You've got distance, distance from the other end. You've got coincident on the bottom of it. So it's fairly simple. Just make sure you put it in the proper place so that the pattern and the move and the other commands that we use later are going to work as far as the dimensions that we give you. So it's just, we're going to just do one here. And later, after everything else is done, then we'll do some moves and copies. And we'll do this. One of the problems sometimes with doing this is that you you can see that the base plate, something's wrong right now. I'm getting the red. And when I want to continue to work on something like this, this is one thing you want to be aware of. I'm just evaluating the existing model. Now, I keep going back farther, and it's still there seems to be a problem in here. So what I would normally do, I don't want to save this because it's one that exists, but I don't want to open it. So if I open it, I'm going to get the exact same one that's in session. And it is the incorrect one at this particular point. <laughs> so close it. This is very important to understand how it's you're managing your file here. I'm going to erase everything that's been shown on the screen. That's in session. Now when I open it up from the working directory, since I didn't save it in that other condition, turn on these. I have to do this every time. 
and you'll see that I'm not getting a failure or a red. Any of these have turned into a highlighted red saying that there's something wrong. So again, if I just keep taking it out of session, even though it's not on my screen, it's going to give me back the one that I had made some changes on. And I don't want to do that. So I want to be able to keep the exact same thing that's here. Now let's take a look and see where we are in the lesson. So basically you're just placing this and then afterwards you're going to do some uh, other commands on this first one here. So again, if we roll this back, we have our mounting bracket here, we have our pattern. And if you look closely in here, you have a lot of groups. And these were all propagated when we were doing the command for the socket head cap screw. So if we took these and deleted them, see what happens. See, but I'm still getting these holes in that in here. And that's one thing that you have to understand is this is created, even though it's in the, here it is right here. I'm going to delete that one also. And in the mounting bracket, we have a lot of items that were automatically put in there also. So let's see. Oh, it looks like I have an extra fillet weld in there because of what I had done. So I'm going to delete pattern and I'm back to this. Now all I'm really doing is I'm just going back to a position where there's nothing on the bracket. Now but you can see these holes were also created when we did the automated process for the socket head cap screw. So for in order for me to use this exact same thing I've got to also find out where those holes are and I can do that by activating the part here and finding where the holes are. So let's say I delete these and see what happens. And whenever it has the SL, that usually means that it's something that's connected to that process. So now I'm back to the original right here, like so. I just did this so that we can work at that particular point, but it is good. You'll see what happens when it propagates in here in the um, in the model tree. So let's go back over to the mounting system and activate that like so. And I'm going to turn off the model tree. Let me take a look at it. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to insert a point and insert a um, an axis. So, but I am in the assembly mode. So I'm going to click on point, put it here on the front portion of the bracket, and I'm going to drag the ref to its references on the front and on the back here on the side. And as I recall, it says 0.75 in both directions. You can work off the model or you could work in the dialogue. Okay. I've got to turn that on. I want my axis and my point on. Now the axis, I'm sorry, the point was still highlighted. I turned it off. I'll leave it on like you would have it. And you go over to the axis and select axis and it goes through that particular point. And hold down your control key and click on the top face here. And it'll auto make it, automatically make it normal. So I have a perpendicular. Click OK. Now I think I'll zoom up and let's take a look at the dimensions before we go on. Basically what we're going to do after we get these two items in there, we're going to go to the tools tab and put in a screw and we're going to select the datum or the axis or the point, either one. So let's go over to our tools tab and this is new for Creo 3.0 and we're going to select the default version here and it says pick the point or axes. 
I think I'll just pick out a point this time. And you can see that it's saying, select a screw head placement surface. So this is the screw head placement surface. And it says, where does the thread start or end or whatever? In this case, I'm going to pick right in here on, on this one. So you'll get two preview arrows showing the direction it's going to be done. And they're going to both face in the same direction. OK. And you can click over here and expand out the whole layout so you can see everything on it. And we're going to have inches, and it's going to be a socket head cap screw. And it's going to be, I think, a half an inch. We're going to go check this and make sure we're using the same ones that are in the book. So basically, you got a half an inch, one and three quarter length, and it's through all thread and side one washers. So we do want side one washers. Uh, we want this to be through thread. And we want this to be one and three quarters, I think it said. And that's too small. I'm going to give us something else. So let's expand this out a little bit. So half an inch, one and three quarters. So it was correct. Close fit with thread through all. And we can preview it. So again, make sure it says through thread. Close fit. You can see you have free fit, close fit. One and three quarters. And it previews it here. And it previews it here. If you turn your model, you'll be able to see it on the assembly, how it looks. Rotate it a little bit. Click OK. And it puts everything in there. Now, it not only puts the socket head cap screw, et cetera, that, but it actually goes to the base plate, in this case here, and it put in all the information here. So it actually put in the hole. You can see it comes through the thread. And if you go down to the very bottom here, you'll see that the screw is showing up in the model tree. And in the base, I'm sorry, in the uh, bracket, you'll see that there's a hole also put in. Let's open up the plate. Take a look at it. And I go to hidden line, and you'll see that it actually put a thread in there. Turn everything on. I find this annoying. It should be on all the time, I think. All right. So you'll see there's also a note attached to it. Turn the note on here. And there's your automated thread. So we didn't have to put that in. That automated um, screw command does this for you. Close that. And I'm going to click on shading with edges. Go back over to here. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to do something else right now just so that I have another version to show you. It's not part of the project, but let's go back over to our model tab and point. Let's put another point. Let's put one right over here, like so. And let's do the exact same thing as we did. Again, this is doing nothing more than um, setting it up. Oh, I keep hitting the wrong thing here. This would give you an, av an example of another version of this. That's all we're really going to do here. It's not something you're going to keep on your model. So we put in the point. We're going to put in the axes. And then we're going to take and we're going to go to the tools tab. 
and this time still put uh, select the point. Now it says select the start point, and now it says select the end point. Now we're going to do something different. We're going to go down to the very bottom, and you can see it highlights. You don't have to turn the model. And we're going to click on that. You can see the arrows here for preview are in opposite directions. And in this case here, let's just throw a whole bunch of stuff on so we can see what it looks like. And, uh, let's go through the order like so. I'm not saying this would be valid for the, this particular project, but you can see here what it did. No counter board or anything. Go back over to this one. So one of the problems with trying to do something with this or work with it afterwards, you can't undo this. You actually have to go to each one of the components and the assembly and make sure everything's deleted out. So this completes the lecture up to this point. Uh, we will then cover the other aspects of it in other lectures because we still have to pattern this. We still have to group things and move them and finish off the project.